Welcome to Burnout Blockers number six, how to prioritize your work as a teacher. In this video, you'll learn a time management strategy for helping you achieve more work-life balance. Another week, another never-ending to-do list. More responsibilities pile on before Ms. Newman finishes the ones that came first. And her to-do list doesn't even include everything she's doing during the school day. So how is it possible that her more experienced colleagues who teach the same subject look so much more relaxed? Ms. Newman wants to be like her colleagues who have developed efficient weekly routines over the years that help them prioritize what's most important. But she doesn't need to wait years for it all to sink in. Let's look at how she can master the art of prioritization now. First things first. Ms. Newman needs to identify how much total time for the week she can devote to chipping away at her work-related to-do list outside of class time. It's really important not to overestimate this amount because it's essential to her survival as a teacher to have enough time remaining for her personal life too. She needs to exercise, grocery shop and cook, see friends and family, get to appointments, and just chill out too. So Ms. Newman decides that she's going to spend a maximum of two extra hours on work beyond the regular school day. Even on the weekend, she's going to try to avoid spending more than three hours a day on school stuff. Maintaining a healthy amount of personal time will help her reduce her stress and therefore strengthen her performance at work in the long run. Next, Ms. Newman's going to identify no more than five major categories of things she needs to get done throughout a particular week, like organizing the classroom, communicating with administrators and parents, planning class time, creating lesson materials, and grading papers. Then, using a decision science approach, she'll rank those categories by thinking about what's really most important to get done well this week, and what honestly wouldn't be a huge deal if she gave it less effort. Lastly, she'll weight these categories by assigning how much time is appropriate to spend on each category out of the maximum number of hours. Note that time spent on creating materials and even grading them will likely decrease a lot after your first couple years of teaching. To enhance her productivity, Ms. Newman can track the chunks of time she's spending on each category throughout the week. A spreadsheet can make it easier to track the running total. Tracking the time will probably push her to stay focused on one task at a time because she won't want to go back and forth tracking five minutes of work she did here or there. It will also help her over time improve her estimates of how long various tasks take. It's often not realistic for a teacher to be able to delegate or ignore tasks, so Ms. Newman is also trying not to feel bad if it looks like she needs to pull back her efforts in some areas to be able to close out her to-do list by the end of the weekend. For example, during the weeks when Ms. Newman has a huge stack of grading to catch up on, Maybe she backs off of setting up elaborate creative lessons and writes up simpler materials that still adhere to the curriculum standards she's required to teach. There's no avoiding the massive amounts of work you have to do as a new teacher, but as they say, you should try to work smarter, not harder. The hours in the day are limited and your energy is too. So make sure how they get used matches up to your priorities. For more in-depth information about how to manage your limited time and also learn how to tackle big decisions, read Smart Choices, a practical guide for making better decisions by John Hammond, Ralph Keeney, and Howard Rafa, and The Organized Mind by Daniel Levitin. Now it's time to put it all together. Check out the last Burnout Blockers video, which gives a quick recap on everything you learned. You want to approach every decision you make as a teacher with a clear head, so take the opportunity to get some simple takeaways for keeping your stress levels low and your thoughts in perspective. How I Decide is an educational nonprofit dedicated to improving the ways people make decisions. If you like what you learned in this video, check out what we can help you teach your students. Our Habit-Wise and Mindful Choices programs bring positive structure to their daily routines to help them manage life stressors and make better decisions. Go to programs.howidecide.org to get free access to the lesson materials.